Hello everyone, welcome back to another GIS Mathematics lecture video. And in this lecture video, I want to continue our discussion on map projections. Specifically, I want to finish up our discussion on the types or categories of map projections. And so we talked about this, the idea of class, which was sort of the shape that we used to wrap the developable surface around the reference globe. Then we talked about the case, which what determined basically how and where the reference globe and the developable surface touched. And we said that if we set it up where it only touched in one location or one circle of locations, we called that the tangent case. And that was usually when we had, in the case of the cylinder, right, that the developable surface had the same diameter as the reference globe. And then we said there was something called the secant case, which was where the developable surface actually intersected the Earth and touched it in two places or in two circles, or two standard lines, right? And we use the term standard line to discuss where those points of contact were. And we said that if you have a standard line, that's the only place on the map where you have no distortion. And so if you think back to all of our examples and sort of maybe you assumed this, I don't, maybe you didn't, but when I, when I was learning about map projections, I kind of assumed this, that when we draw everything, when we discussed everything, right, we were discussing it as though the equator was the standard line, right? We even went so far as to say that in the case of the cylinder, in the um, tangent case, right? That, that the standard line was the equator. Well, that doesn't have to be the case, right? You can imagine, you know, a case where we took that cylinder and we rotated it around the reference globe, right? Because there doesn't have to be standing up straight, right? It could be on its side. It could be on, on any sort of angle. And so that angle, right, when we don't, when we, when we take the developable surface and we rotate it so that it's not no longer, no longer vertical, right, we call that the aspect. And this is the angle of the reference globe. Relative to the, the developable surface. Or you could say that it's the angle of the developable surface relative to the reference globe. All right, but let's go ahead and just like what we've done in the past, let's draw some diagrams to explain what that means. So let's start with the one that we've already seen here. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the cone or the conic class, and I'm going to use the secant case just so that we get a really good grasp of those two concepts because they're the ones that we kind of haven't talked about as much. Right, so let's assume that, the, again, this is our, um, this is our developable, or our, our reference globe. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to copy this a couple times. One, two. Okay, so you now have three identical reference globes. That might cut down a little bit on my bad drawing here. So this case, right, where we have the um, the conic class doing something like this. Right, we have a standard line here where it touches the globe. If I, again, my drawing skills are not that great. <laughs> and we have a standard line here where it touches the reference globe. All right, so when the, when the, um, when the developable surface is oriented north-south, we call this normal. 
or oftentimes it won't even have a name, right? We would just say that this is the, um, we would just say that this is the conic projection, right? We don't, we don't even say it, but this is the normal, this is the normal aspect. Or sometimes you'll see it called the equatorial. Right, because it's it's sort of oriented with the equator in mind. You could imagine instead of having this normal or this equatorial, where the secant line or the standard lines are running along parallels, you could imagine a case where instead we rotated this cone 90 degrees, and so it would look something more like this. Oops, it's going to be particularly bad even for me, right? You could instead imagine doing something like this. Well, we've rotated it 90 degrees. So we have a standard line here, right? And we have a standard line here. Right. And so in this case, right, when the standard lines are now running along meridians, right, instead of parallels are running along meridians, we call this the transverse aspect. Okay. And then finally, right, you could imagine that maybe we pick something in between, right, where instead of having it run along a meridian or a parallel, right, it runs something like this. And we have a standard line here, and we have a standard line here. So in this case where it's not along a parallel or a meridian, right, we call this oblique. And so why do we care about aspect? Right? It seems kind of strange that we would Right? It seems kind of strange that we would bother with this sort of terminology here. But what you have to think about is the fact that this allows us to control, right? and again, we can move these up and down too. This allows us to control where the standard lines are, which allows us to control where our distortion is. Right? So as a general rule, right, you want your standard lines to match up as closely as possible with the region of interest. Right, and we're going to go through an example um, when we talk about the math behind it of something called the Universal Transverse Mercator, or UTM, which is one of the most popular projections for local areas. So again, just to sort of recap with map with aspect, right? that's the angle between the reference scope and the developable surface. If the developable surface runs north-south so that the standard lines are running along parallels, we call that the normal projection, or the normal, sorry, the normal aspect or the equatorial aspect. If we rotate it on its side so that the standard lines run along meridians, we call that the transverse aspect. And if we just sort of rotate it anywhere in between, we call that the oblique aspect. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any questions, please reach out. Thank you.